One thing I am certainly sensitive to is the challenges that come with leading people, managing people. And as much as we talk about Tony Khan and his roles, responsibilities, as the owner of AEW, one of the primary functions of his job is to lead people, is to manage people, manage personalities. It's just a function of the environment that he's in, plain and simple. And sometimes that could be the most exhilarating and thrilling part of the job. And sometimes certainly can be the most vexing, problematic, troublesome, annoying, irritating, aggravating, frustrating, stupid part of the job. And as much as it's easy to point the finger of blame at Tony Khan and say, at the end of the day, the buck is supposed to stop with him. Therefore, if things happen under his watch, he's ultimately culpable, responsible for them happening. That is true. And I'm not here to absolve him of blame. However, in this case, the, the feedback or the criticism feels a little more appropriate to point in the direction of the different assorted talents within AEW. Because we've got to be honest here. It cannot be that hard to not be freaking idiots. It cannot be that hard to be able to control your God-blessed emotions. Like, see, sometimes I raise my voice for effect. That doesn't mean I lose control of my emotions. But some of these numbskulls, some of these idiots in AEW act like a bunch of prepubescent freaking preteens or early teenagers getting worried about the stupidest little thing, getting into Twitter spats and letting that go into the freaking real world, getting themselves worked up into a goddamn shoot. What the hell is wrong with you? Like, you look at the whole crap involving CM Punk, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, so Hangman Page. Like, every one of them looks like fucking immature, childish idiots here. If you're going to defend somebody, don't, because they don't deserve it. Like CM Punk is a freaking 40-plus-year-old grown-ass man. Why are you whining, pissing, and bitching, and moaning? Because somebody went into business for themselves in a promo when you go into business for your goddamn self in that post-all-out media scrum. And then you got Omega and the Bucks. You're supposed to be EVPs. That shouldn't be just a label or a fancy name. It's supposed to represent a position of leadership and authority. Freaking act like it. Don't be goddamn snowflakes the first time anybody lobs any type of criticism. You want to get all panties in a bunch butthurt and emotional about it. But even with them, I understand if a Tony Khan looks at it and says, you know what? They all suck right now and they're all pains in the asses and they're all driving me nuts. But there's a certain level of, you know, like grace that you give them because of their value or what they mean. You know, you talk about like value to the company is equivalent to how much crap you're willing to put up with them. Like you think about back in the old days, you know, guys like Austin and Hogan and Brett and Sean and t all these other guys, you know, a lot of them were pains in the freaking asses to deal with. At, from like an executive and leadership standpoint, they were absolutely pains in the asses for everybody behind the scenes to deal with and work with. But they also brought a certain level of results that gave them more leeway. Fair or not, that's the way the freaking real world works. The better you are, the more chances you get. The better you are, the more grace and leeway you're given. So I get not like firing any of them and suspending them and trying to give it some time and figure out how things are going to go. But I look at this crap with Andrade and Sammy Guevara and say, these guys cannot possibly be worth the headache or the hassle or problems. They can't be. They don't move the needle. They don't bring you anything to the table, frankly. And even if they were talents that actually could, they're not. But even if they were, you don't put them in a position to do that as a company in AEW. So, realistically, they don't bring you any value. So your tolerance for them and their bullshit should be a whole lot less than it would be for, let's say, 
a CM Punk, a Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick Jackson. Like, that's just reality. There is no way I would put up in a leadership position with the same amount of crap and whining and sniping behind the scenes from an Andrade El Idolo or a Sammy Guevara as I would a Kenny Omega. Like, that's insane. Why in the hell would you do that? So you got these two idiots getting into a Twitter spat because Guevara doesn't like that Andre El Idolo was too stiff with him and too physical with him. And then they're going to go fucking back and forth. And they basically work themselves into a fucking shoot where there's a backstage altercation, conflicting reports about who was the aggressor, who started it, who threw punches. And it's like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Now maybe Andrade is looking at this and saying, this is my pathway, my opportunity to get the hell out of my AEW contract because I don't like it here. Well, guess what? Ding dong, dumb dick. That probably isn't going to happen. So you played that card wrong. As far as Sammy Guevara, like, it's amazing how much goodwill this guy has ruined over the past couple of years to the point where he's pretty well hated. Like, not because he's a heel, but because he's a freaking raging dickhead. And people are tired of his crap. Like, how hard is it to not just shut the hell up? How hard is it if you're Andrade and Sammy... To not let yourself get worked up to the point where you're throwing freaking punches at each other backstage. It ain't that serious, fellas. It's really not. And as far as Sammy Guevara goes, like you talk about him, wasn't it a few weeks back, him and Eddie Kingston got into a freaking backstage altercation. Sounds like maybe Eddie Kingston was the aggressor because he didn't like the fact that Sammy talked about his appearance and his way and he's sensitive to that. You know, it's funny. All the work shoot goddamn promos that somebody cuts, but as soon as somebody says something about them, they get all emotional about it. It's wrestling. It's not ballet. Fucking get over yourselves. Eddie Kingston should have been suspended for months for just sheer stupidity and emotional instability. But there's a common theme here. Like you keep running into issues with Sammy Guevara. At what point in time do you stop looking at others and you look at him and say, he may be the fucking problem. And of course, instead of treating him like the problem that he seems to clearly be at this point, AEW rewards him by giving him the win in the main event on Dynamite. That's psychotic. You're basically enabling the childish, petulant behavior. Like what is so hard about showing up to do your freaking job at a place where you're probably well, relatively well compensated, although I always argue that wrestlers are really dumb because they're incredibly poorly compensated relative to what they should be compensated based off of their profile, what they bring to the table, so forth. But how hard is it to shut the hell up and show up to work and just do your damn job and not get caught up and hooked by all the freaking Childish adult drama. Stay in your own lane. Worry about your own self. And do good business. It's not that hard. I don't want to hear the excuses. I don't want to hear the spin. It's not that hard. Do it. Like these two. The fact that if you're Andrade... What the hell do you look like letting Sarvi Guevara work you up to a point where you want to throw blows with him? You can blame Guevara all you want, but you look like the asshat here. And as far as Sammy Guevara, the hell do you look like? You're supposed to be one of the pillars of AEW. Yet, you get so worked up by something that a loser like Andrade does. You look like an ass clown too. Like, I feel a lot of this environment is fostered and created by Tony Khan because he's more worried about trying to be buddy-buddy versus being a businessman. But, as easy as it is to just point there, and, and there is accountability and blame there, don't absolve them of that, because ultimately the buck does stop with Tony Khan. At some point in time, you got to look at the Jimmys and Joes within the organization, the guys and gals, and say, cut this shit out. You have culpability and responsibility here, too. This is not one of these, can we all just get along speeches. This is a thing of... Stop getting so goddamn emotional and butthurt over every little thing everybody might say about you. How the hell are you ever going to reach your peak success if you're worried about all the other spin and swirl and bullshit? Focus on you. What you could do better. What you could bring to the table. 
how you're going to be the best that you could be for your independent contractor employer AEW. Think about what you can bring to the table, how you can take advantage of your television time, how you can get yourself over, get your opponent over. You know, do the things that wrestling are supposed, supposed to, it's supposed to be about. Instead, you got guys sniping, talking shit about each other in a non-entertaining way. Like, here's the reality. is Even if you were enjoying any of the AEW product right now, which, you know, there are pockets of it that are good and other pockets of it that just look like drizzling crap, it gets overshadowed by all the other behind-the-scenes stuff that gets out there. And what's even more ridiculous is the fact that you've got so many leaks in the damn locker room that none of this stuff can stay under wraps anyways. I come on, this is a message to that locker room in AEW. Act like freaking adults. You're supposed to be professionals. You're supposed to be in a business. A business that's about making money. And somewhere we lost the plot there. That's the number one goal of the program. Don't ever get it twisted. If you're in the business because you're more focused on getting five star ratings from Dave Meltzer, you are a major problem with the fucking business as it is. Shut the fuck up. Focus on yourself. Stop whining, pissing, and moaning about everything that doesn't perfectly go your way because of the new flash. Not everything that going your way would be the right thing either. That's human nature. That's reality. We all think we have some of the best damn ideas in the world until we realize that we don't. And they're really stupid. As far as I'm concerned, I just sit Andrade at home, keep him under his contract, pay him to be miserable just to prove a goddamn point. And Sammy Guevara, I'd fire his ass. Because what does he bring to the table? What's he going to go do in a WWE that's going to really shake you up? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if his wife doesn't like it, she can freaking go too. She doesn't bring anything to the table that you can't replace. Send a message. But to the rest of the locker room, get over yourselves. Stop acting like freaking children. You're allegedly supposed to be adults. How about you act like it?